Yo guys, it's Sam and iOS 12 is out for everybody right now. You can head over to settings general and software update as always and you'll see iOS 12.0 is now available to download. There's a lot that happened this year. It's definitely a smaller update than in the past, but still a good number of changes. I've made a ton of videos on it already, so check those out in case you haven't already. But here's a look at some of the biggest features that Apple included this year. All right, so first up, it's really fast. And I know that's something that you've probably heard before. And with iOS 11 last year, Apple definitely let us down. It was a slow update off the bat, there were tons of bugs and glitches, and it was a really bad update for the first couple of months. I would say it's a pretty fair sentiment there. With iOS 12, uh, I can almost guarantee that's not going to be the case. Apple on stage highlighted the performance, and I've tested it, and it's actually faster than iOS 11, even if it's just by a little bit. Now, the performance changes obviously will be more significant on an older device like the iPhone 5S or the iPhone 6, but they are actually noticeable on something like the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 10 as well. So better performance is huge, and I think that's the biggest takeaway this year. Following that is grouped notifications. I have wanted to see this feature for such a long time, and when I first tested it back in June, it was incredible, and it continues to be one of my favorite features that iOS 12 has to offer. It basically takes all your notifications and now sorts them by app. So instead of having 11 different messages notification bubbles, you can just tap on the general messages tab in notifications, and they all all pop up with this really nice animation and then you can sort through them that way. Now, if you don't like group notifications, of course, you can turn them off, but I really like them. I'm going to keep them on for sure. And it's really helped me organize my notifications rather than having them all over the place like I did in iOS 11. Up next is the stocks app. So if you're really into checking stocks or checking crypto or just into the financial sector in general, the stocks app got a huge upgrade with iOS 12. It's been completely redesigned from the ground up. Charts look different. Actually, viewing stocks is a little bit different. And there's now integration of relevant news, uh, financial news from the news app. So if you really wanna be up to date on what's happening, you can not only see like the current trading stock price, but also why Nike might be up or Apple might be down or why Sonos is the best stock to invest in. Like there's gonna be a ton of random articles you can read about. And honestly, it's been pretty useful so far. Sometimes the articles hit, sometimes they miss, but overall pretty cool integration there. Okay, so next up is a feature called screen time. And it's definitely the scariest feature that Apple introduced this year. Um, uh, it basically shows you how much time you spend on your devices, but not just a general overview, like social networking, media consumption, productivity. It separates all that data, it gives it to you, which is cool. But I've realized that I use my phone way more than I thought I used my phone. I think my average is between two and four hours a day. Definitely during the summer when I had more free time and I wasn't going to classes at college, it was a lot higher. Now that I'm back in school and I have classes almost every day, obviously I'm a little bit more busy focusing on my studies, but still, being able to see this data is cool. Props to Apple for including this, but let me know down below after you've updated iOS 12, how much you use your phone. Is it too much? Uh, do you not use it enough? Are you pretty happy with your current state of usage. Now on the total flip side of that is a really fun new feature, new Animoji and new Memoji. So Animoji are the little things that kind of map onto your face and you can make them talk or sing, do pretty much anything. And the tracking on the iPhone 10 is really great. This is an iPhone 10, iPhone 10s, 10s Max, and 10R exclusive feature, but it works really well. The killer feature though in iOS 12 is Memoji. They allow you to become exactly, well, an Animoji to animate yourself and make your own Memoji. You can make it look like you, you can make it look like somebody else, or you can just customize it to your heart's desire. There is a ridiculous amount of options. They're really fun to play with. I don't think it's going to be a feature that I use after the first couple weeks of installing iOS 12, but it's there, uh, and it's definitely a good way to show like, hey, you're on the iOS 12 update. Next up, if we go over to the iPad, the iPad finally got some love this year for apps that we've wanted to see on there for a long time. Number one, there is the Stocks app now, but number two, you've got Voice Memos. The Voice Memos app on iPad was completely redesigned uh, pretty much from the ground up, and it looks fantastic. If you wanna create short voice or audio notes now, they're not restricted to your iPhone or a third-party app on the iPad, you can do it straight from 
the voice memos app officially from Apple. It works really great. And it's one of those features that should have been here forever, but that Apple just got around to with iOS 12. After that, iBooks got a new name and a complete redesign. So it's now called Apple Books. And I've never been a fan of reading on screens. It always seems to like hurt my eyes and I feel a little bit fatigued after a while. However, if you do, you're going to absolutely love the new Apple Books app. It is redesigned. The attention to detail, the use of fonts and type here is I'd say it's next level. Like it's one of those apps that I don't think I'll be using myself, but if you read books on an iOS device, the new update is so great. The Apple Book Store got a redesign it, the way you read books. Obviously like reading is pretty much the same, but the animations are a little bit different. Really great upgrade and even if you're not into reading, I'd recommend checking it out because the design language here is just so crisp. All right, and after the Apple Books redesign is Siri Shortcuts. Now there's been a lot of questions as to how you can get this. I believe it's going to be available for download on the App Store. And Siri Shortcuts is pretty crazy. You can now assign pretty much any automated workflow to a Siri command. So there's a pretty big gallery with a ton of shortcuts that you can choose from, or you can make your own. So what's really cool here is I made a Siri shortcut that so when I tell Siri like, hey Siri, open I update, Siri will actually open up my website just like that. It's crazy, you can also just tap on any of these shortcuts to complete them or start these automations. And I think the potential here is going to be out of this world. So go ahead and give not only this feature a try, but go ahead and try everything else that's new in iOS 12. I only gave you a small snippet of the new feature. I would argue that these are the biggest changes, but there are a lot of hidden features, a lot of other changes as well. So let me know your thoughts on iOS 12. Drop a like if you're excited, if you've already updated, and of course, subscribe for more on iOS 12 in the future. I've been Sam, I hope you're doing great, and I will talk to you in my next video.